Hi and welcome to this quick explanation of the Porter analysis, also known as Porter's Five Forces. The reason I want to show you this um, is because it forms a basis of what a lot of lenders look at when actually trying to assess the non-financial elements of a business. I'm going to take you through it quite quickly because some of it is misunderstood. Okay, up here we have buyer risk. Buyer risk. What buyer risk is, is all the things that can go wrong with people that buy your products. So, concentration. Have you got one single client? Okay. Um, is one person buying a lot of large volume of all your goods? Um, what do you know about the buyer? Are they sensitive to price, foreign exchange risk? Is there a brand identity risk, etc.? So, everything that connects with you, your buyers and who buys your goods, that goes in there. Be honest with it. There will be risks. Some companies do have one sole client. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're doing something about it, or you address it, there's a reason for it. Um, supplier risk. This is very interesting these days because we're starting to see this. Um, supplier risk. Who supplies your goods? It's not just about have you got more than one supplier. It is things like what happens if they change payment terms? We've seen that in supermarkets and Tesco's in the last couple of years. How easy is it to move to a new supplier? If it's a real bespoke technical piece of manufacturing, it could be quite difficult. How many suppliers are in the market? The stability. We are seeing companies fail. So if that's one of your suppliers, you need to know how stability and how st much stability they got. Um, this would cost moving suppliers. Sometimes if there is. Um, if you're going to move supplier away, does that supplier own your tooling? If they own your tooling or have your tooling, it can be a real challenge to move away from them. So again, recognise your risks in there. Don't be afraid to have risks. Let me jump down, down to competition. Competition, this is about who else is in your marketplace doing something similar to you. Um, the worst answer you can put in there is none. I have seen it with none, um, but you don't want none in there because we will have competition. Look at the brand strength, look at the price difference. You know, is there a direct com uh, compatibility, cost, delivery, USP? There will be strengths and weaknesses in that box to your competition. Um, new entrance. New entrance, this is again is, is quite interesting and it's changed a lot because we've seen regulation come to a lot of industries, um, including finance like myself, um, but we've also seen it come into healthcare, um, dentists, uh, doctors' practices, estate agents, everyone now is going to slow more regulation. So there's a lot more legal barriers to people going into different industries. Um, geography, brand strength, costs, niche. Um, there's lots of reasons why, why new entrants will come into it. Um, there is a slight correlation between new entrants and this one down here, which is substitutes. Substitutes, this is the most misused part of the porter. Substitutes refers to substitute products. Okay, so the product, not your company. Um, good example of this. Um, if we go back a few years, we could see Blockbuster. Blockbuster video failed. Um, what was a substitute to Blockbuster? If you asked for Blockbuster at the time, they'd have said the substitute for video, VHS video offering would have been DVDs. It wasn't. They missed it. It was streaming. Um, the substitute to uh, the record of a cassette could be the CD. It's now the download. What goes next? What happens after that? Um, so think wider than just what else could a consumer use. Um, get a bit of thought into that one. Because if you can get your thought into it, it will start to steer your business in where you want to go as well. Um, but that's your portal analysis. All of these parts will be considered by a lender in their non-financial analysis. They may not use it as a portal analysis, but if you can go through this model, use it, address it, highlight the risks, highlight what you're going to do, and you should find finance a little bit easier. Any questions, as always, please get in touch by the website at sussexbusinessfinance.com um, or call me 01293 541 333. Thank you.